Hi guys, this is Donna with Love Rocks, and we have got a little bit of a different video here for you today. This is our woolly mammoth. Uh, let's start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of your support. Um, our channel is growing and we're able to really pump some videos out. So we really appreciate everyone who has come and subscribed and supported this channel. For those of you who have not subscribed, please do subscribe and like. Um, it helps us to push forward and be able to do more videos. Also, if you want to be in this week's drawing, uh, please subscribe and comment. You have to do both in order to be in the drawing. Uh, this week, we will not have a rock to be drawn for. Um, instead, we have got some brushes, some paints, and some art supplies that will be sent out to the person who wins the drawing. Uh, reason being, this rock actually was, um, was promised to somebody when I painted it, but I used the video um, because I, I really wanted to get this video out. I thought it turned out really cool. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to give some art supplies away this week. A really nice set of uh, Benisi uh, detail brushes will be sent out along with some other art supplies. So let's get fo moving forward. Uh, my husband wanted a woolly mammoth. Uh, I, I looked at him like he was crazy when he told me this is what he wanted. And then I jumped right in and started uh, trying to find pictures that would inspire me. Most of the time, I don't think I've ever done a rock without at least three pictures. Um, when you freehand this stuff, you need to be able to see how the shading looks from different directions and how, especially with these big O tusks, um, how they're going to look from different, different directions, uh, how they're going to, the sizing compared to the face and compared to the body, all of that. With that being said, I, you need at least two or three um, pictures to go off of. And so I would call this painting intermediate, uh, definitely an intermediate. Um, it, it, it did take quite a bit of time and effort. I think I put probably about five hours into this altogether. And um, I enjoyed it, but it, it did stretch my limits quite a bit. Um, there were places where I didn't like the shading, and then I went back in and reshaded. Um, so it, it took me a bit to get it the way I wanted, and I wound up using about three pictures, three different pictures, to um, try to find the facial structure that I wanted and, and the body structure that I wanted. Um, definitely something that you can try. Uh, I, I always preach that. Please, I don't care how far out of your league something is. Try it. If you don't try and you don't push yourself outside of that uh, boundaries of um, comfort, you're never going to grow in painting. So uh, if you're just painting rocks to paint them and hide them and you don't care what they look like, that's great. Uh, you can do that all day long. But if you do want to um, expand your capabilities and, and gain a little bit of experience, uh, take that chance on failing. Um, I will tell you, I have failed several times. And it's funny because my husband's like, what are you going to do with that rock? You haven't done anything with it. You didn't like it. You didn't like what you put on it. I said, well, I was going to throw it out front and now I've decided I'm just going to paint over it. So what I wind up doing is I uh, put two or three base coats of white over the top of it. I turn it into a hiding rock because by then it's got quite a bit of paint on it. And uh, I turn it into a hiding rock and I move on. So um, you're going to fail. I, I don't know if there's anybody out there that paints rocks that hasn't failed. Um, but you're never going to know what you can do unless you, unless you try it. I have some of these rocks that I've done that have been difficult. I've actually learned stuff off of them that now I'm able to, able to do easier, able to do smoother, able to do better because I've taken that chance. So please, I, I encourage you, 
And there is nothing out there that you can't try and there's nothing out there that you can't do. And you may do this one and it may not turn out the way you want it. And you might laugh at yourself and say, oh my gosh, I don't want anybody to see this. Um, but guess what? There's always that little tiny bit of chance that uh, there's something about it that you like and you'll keep it. Um, so definitely outside of my comfort zone. And, and definitely outside of my genre, like, I, I would never have thought to do a prehistoric animal. And let me tell you, he's already thought of other things for me to do um, within the, the prehistoric era. So you might see other things that are like this. Uh, I don't mind trying different things. I do have an area of comfort and I do enjoy doing those things within that area. Uh, but there's always um, room to, to try other things. So hopefully you enjoy this and I hope you like it. Um, Color-wise, I've posted the colors because um, I was so involved in painting that I forgot to show you the colors as I was using them. So um, very basic colors on this animal. I think I wound up using four colors. Uh, a brown, a beige, a black, and a white. I don't think I used anything outside of those four colors. Um, so basically, uh, very, very, very earth tone colors. You can use any variants of those colors to do this. Uh, I think the hardest part for me was getting the tusks just right and getting the shading just right. And I'll tell you, I'm not thrilled with the tusks. I would want to work those over a little bit more, but I did start to get frustrated and discouraged. So um, I encourage you to uh, paint outside of your, your comfort zone and be okay with the fact that you might go back and try it again. So um, as far as brushes go, let's see, I used the, the Benisi brushes. Um, I really like those brushes. I've, I've been trying to really push those brushes because they're inexpensive, but they're very um, comfortable brushes. And anybody who tries them, I, I would like to have some feedback from you on how you guys feel about them. Um, it, the, way they're, the way they're made, they sit very nicely in your hand. And uh, the bristles are, are good synthetic bristles. They're, they're good bristles. I haven't had any problems with mine at all. Um, and then, of course, my paints. I use the Folk Art Multi Surface Paints, and um, the I did use a spray sealer on this. Uh, my resin came in this week, and so I'm, I've started playing around with it. But I didn't want to practice on one of my good rocks, so um, I will continue to practice with it. And as soon as I get that down a little bit better, then I'll start putting some resin on some of these rocks. Um, one exciting thing I would like for everybody to know is that we hit um, 5,000 views this week. I've only been doing my YouTube page since the first part of December, the end of November, first part of December, right in there. And um, we hit 5,000 views this week. So I was really excited about that. So thank you, thank you for everybody who's been watching the videos. Uh, I think our next video is going to probably go back to um, another, another gnome. I have one done that I'm probably going to use. Um, but I am trying to find some other things outside of that to do with spring coming. Uh, let's talk about this little guy. So um, he, I think one of the difficult things with this painting was the darks were laying on top of the darks. You'll notice once um, I start really getting down into the, the ear um, and the side of his face and the neck, well, that's really not the ear. Right now, it looks like an ear. It almost looks like an elephant. But it's it's actually the area that goes back. Because if you look at a woolly mammoth, they don't have the big ears or anything. Um, it, it's the piece that goes back and 
shades into that back hump. Um, and so with this, the difficult thing for me was shading dark on dark on dark. Um, I really enjoy real, real lights and real, real darks and putting them together and having that distinction between the two colors. Uh, with this guy, that's that's not what you're doing because you have to show that it's shaded over there, but you also have to show that he has such dark colored um, fur. On top of that, you're trying to show that he does have fur. He's, he's furry. So um, with all of that being said, that was a difficult thing to try to get those darks on darks on darks. So you just had varying shades of dark on top of each other to kind of pull all those colors out. Also, my, I started sketching him. I got him sketched in and I went down to sketch his legs and realized that I really uh, needed about three more inches on this thing to get his legs in the right way. So he's only at the bottom of that rock. He's only to about, you know, just below the chest. Um, so his legs kind of blend in and uh, I had to really work on showing that, that distinction between the front leg on his his right side and the back of his body because there's so much dark in there. So uh, I really worked on that pretty hard to lighten up a few areas, to add in some darks, and I don't know, maybe I went too far with the dark. Maybe I needed to, to really pull in more lights, but these animals, everything that I looked at, they're such a dark color. Um, and of course, you've got the wool. So I didn't want to lose that appearance of, of hair all over him. But I needed to keep the darks and I needed to make sure that I could show hair direction. And so with that being said, you gotta, you've got to do your shading in a way that it represents the puffiness of that hair. I hope that makes sense. So um, all throughout, especially on his back, I tried to leave some areas that I could wisp um, so that you had some little bit of wisps coming off of him. I also tried to leave some areas of uh, uh, where it wasn't smooth. There was some bumpiness such as some rolls of hair uh, along his back um, without losing the shape of the animal because these woolly mammoths, they're very, very top heavy. If you look at pictures, they've got a big head. They've got that big uh, snout that comes out. They've got those huge tusks, but their bodies in comparison to that, that large heaviness of, of their head are kind of small. So I wanted to make sure that as I went back to the back end of this animal, that it did give you that sense that um, the rest of his body was a little bit smaller. Whereas an elephant extends that size all the way, you know, to the back end. Like they're, they're proportionally sized big throughout their body. Um, but woolly mammoths aren't. Um, and so I, I really tried to get that to show without making him too short or making him look like he was, you know, stocky or disproportioned at all. I, I wanted to make sure that that back end appeared to be of smaller build, not stature necessarily, but build, a, a thinner build than the front of him and the top of him. And so you still have to keep some proportion with his legs, um, front and back. Um, but I was uh, to keep it from looking like an elephant and to really push it towards looking like a woolly mammoth. I had to, I had to really manipulate that back end to allow that sizing to go down. So I guess I can't um, I, I, that's about the best way that I can put it. Uh, if you look at a mammoth, I think you'll understand what I'm trying to say. 
the tusks, tusks were, I mean, they were a little hard. Um, I have practiced since I did this um, and came up with a little bit better shading uh, that I could have used on these tusks. And I don't know, I may go back and, and play with the shading just a little bit. Let me give you a little tiny bit of advice. Um, these rocks are so small. I don't know if you can tell. This is one of the biggest rocks I think I've ever painted. Um, and it's probably five or six inches tall. And maybe five or six wide. And normally I will use a much smaller rock for anything that I do. But a word of advice when you're doing something such as a tusk where it's, there's going to be a smooth surface with some shading. And I didn't do this. And that's why I'm telling you that I've been practicing. Um, if you can use your shading brush, the brush that you've cut all the bristles off. And so you've only got that little, you know, 16th of an inch um, bristle on. Um, if you can do it in the direction of your tusk. So if you can shade it back and forth in that direction, I, it looks better. The problem being on these little tiny pictures with these little tiny tusks, trying to get a shading brush in there, unless you have an itty bitty little shading brush. And I do have a small one, but it, it wasn't quite as small as I needed. It's very hard to make it shade in that rounded um, motion. So that's what, if you're gonna practice this, that's what I want you to do. You can put your color down the side of your, of your horn like it is on this, but then take your brush and dab it and shade in that circular motion back and forth across that that horn instead of in a elongated motion, which is what I did on this one. Since this is my husband's and it'll be staying here, I may go back and and, and maybe play with his. He loves it and doesn't want me to touch it. Um, he says I tend to overdo things. So uh, he, he may not let me touch it, <laughs> but... I would like to do something else, and I'm sure, knowing him, that he will come up with other things for me to do um, that's got horns in it. So, um, let's see, what else about this guy? I was, I was kind of picky about my rock. So, I, I went through, gosh, I probably went through almost every rock I have, and I've got a lot of rocks right now. I looked at some dark rocks. I looked at some light rocks. Um, I looked at round rocks. I looked at some flat sandstone. Um, I looked at a lot of rocks. And I, I picked this color hoping that I could, I could color him in a way that it would stand out but not be too bright. And the problem was I had those, those tusks. And so you'll see, even on this light colored rock, I mean, it's not that light. Um, I'm able to pull those dark colors out. So that was good. That was the big thing. But my white tusks are, they really like, they're almost like light bulbs. They're so light. And I didn't really like that. Um, but I didn't have a better rock or a combination that I could think of that I liked better. So uh, take that into consideration when you're painting. Um, really look at your rocks, look at what colors you're going to use, look at what you're painting, and, and make sure that you kind of think that out. Now, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect because I thought this out and I don't know, I, I there's area on the rock that kind of blend and so that worries me a little bit. But then there's other areas that it really pops out. So, you know, I, I don't know. I may have people say, hey, why did you pick that color? Um, it blends in a lot. Um, just know that I really did put some thought process into it. And I did go through quite a few rocks before I decided uh, which one to use. Um, but it 
it was just a difficult choice. Uh, I, I picked this tan colored, um, almost a sandstone. It, it's not a true sandstone. It's a harder rock than that, but it's a sandstone color uh, to do it on because I knew I had all those darks that I was going to be putting on there. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys feel like it popped out of there nicely. Um, but I guess my thoughts on that is uh, just take that into consideration when you're doing your rock. I always tell everybody, run it underwater real quick. See what it color it's going to look like when you seal it. Um, run it underwater and look at the colors that you're going to use and you're going to know if it's, if it's going to be okay or not. Um, but I don't know. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with him. Um, I'll probably do some other like him at some point. Well, this is the end of our video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, like I said, it's a little bit different, so uh, we'll probably have mixed feelings from people. Thank you guys for coming, and we'll have another video out in a few days. Bye-bye.